Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Jesus came down through the wilderness. It's a, a really rugged and kind of nasty desert, almost indescribable desert from Jerusalem down to the Jordan. It's, uh, it's hilly with lots of arroyos, virtually no vegetation, and, uh, and just real wilderness for miles and miles and miles. And he came down through that wilderness and he was baptized in the muddy waters of the Jordan River. Jordan there is maybe five, six feet deep. It's not terribly wide. Uh, maybe as wide as the canal down by 29th Street. Um, and very muddy and slow moving. So Jesus was baptized in these muddy waters. And there were others baptized by John as well. And after Jesus came out of the river, he came to the shore and he stepped aside to pray while others were being baptized. Don't know if he was kneeling or standing or sitting, but he just went off with himself and was praying. And while he was praying, the Holy Spirit came to him and he heard these words from God, you are my beloved son. I am very pleased with you. And what I'd like to ask you this morning is, what was Jesus praying about? Now it seems to me that it's a really important and it's a helpful question. What was he praying about? And I actually think the story gives us clues about the answer to that. And that his prayer involves at least three major themes. First, Jesus was praying about rebirth. Second, he was praying with compassion. And third, Jesus was praying about his own vocation. Rebirth, compassion, and vocation. I think they're always our major themes in daily prayer. Prayer of rebirth. There's, there are a whole lot of things that can drag you underwater. That can drown your spirit. That can make you feel like you're underwater in the muddy Jordan River. Now, of course, there's sin and guilt, but those are only a part of the muddy water that threatens to drown us. What makes something sinful is that it feeds the darkness that lurks behind and within everything. The darkness includes and is the fear of death and the reality of destruction. And it includes a lot more than sin. Being depressed is like being underwater. Everybody's depressed some of the time. <clears throat> and some people fight depression all of the time. When Jesus went underwater in baptism and emerged again, he was symbolically casting off depression. Being anxious or worried drags a lot of us underwater. We hunker down, avoiding life because we're afraid, or because we failed, or because we've been hurt in the past. Fear of death, or the reality of disease, for ourselves or those we love, can drag us down underwater. These are constant, daily threats, well known to mature human beings. 
As we live each day and year, we accumulate losses and griefs. There are new joys and opportunities, but there are permanent losses. Failures, accidents, losses of loved ones. And the older we get, the more familiar we become with grief. And the more frequently we need the new life that is symbolized in baptism. Baptism, going under the muddy water and coming up again, is the promise of the Holy Spirit's availability for new life from depression, failure, anxiety, despair, and loss. It's a symbolic drowning and coming back from near death. Now, I have no idea what Jesus had been through in the first 30 years of his life before he came there to join with others who were being baptized by John in the muddy Jordan River. But I do know this, he was seeking a new life that day, as he had learned to seek it daily over the previous three decades. And when he was praying after coming out of that water, he was praying a prayer of rebirth a prayer of relief, a prayer of thanksgiving, a prayer for new eyes and new hope. This is not just about being cleansed from sin and guilt. It's about coming back from the darkness and death, the half-life that so easily ensnares us, that threatens daily to drown us. Jesus prayed the prayer of rebirth. And he prayed the prayer of compassion. <clears throat> now, one of the most important ways that the Holy Spirit redeems grief and failure in our lives is to give us compassion. Compassion and sympathy <coughs> are English words which come from Latin and Greek, respectively. And they mean exactly the same thing. Feeling with. Feeling with. Therefore, if someone is suffering or grieving, compassion or sympathy means to share that suffering or grief. To know what it is because you feel it with them. To help bear the load of the feeling. <clears throat> One of the most wonderful characteristics that the New Testament Gospel shows us about Jesus is his fellow feeling. This is really absolutely clear in the Gospels. His compassion, both with individuals and with groups of people. We're familiar with the number of times Jesus stopped whatever important thing he was doing to just relate to a child or a blind person, or someone in need. We remember when he took the time to teach people who approached him angrily, trying to trick him, or hating his religious teaching. He took time with them. He took time with the Pharisees. Perhaps he knew what it was like to be stuck in your head, to be in need of real learning. Before the feeding of the 5,000, there's this wonderful line, the, the people are clamoring over the rocks to get to it, be down in the wilderness. <clears throat> and he says he has had compassion with them, because they were like sheep without a shepherd. As I said, I got no idea what Jesus was doing in those decades before he came to the Jordan to be baptized. But what I do know is that he learned compassion. You learn compassion through your own suffering and through the suffering of others. Clearly Jesus did not consider himself to be superior to the other people who were seeking healing in the baptizing water. 
He knew what it was to need to be born again, to come up from despair or pain or doubt. Otherwise, he would not have been praying. And so, after Jesus joined with others in the water, after he found a new day and reaffirmed his own hope, he could not help but be praying for and with the people around him. Perhaps he was also praying for his friend Jokimpo back home. People who were sick or grieving or dying or troubled. New life is like breathing in healthy <coughs> compassion. Once you've been hurt and brought back, compassion is the only way in which your healing can be maintained and grow. Jesus prayed a prayer of rebirth. He prayed a prayer of compassion and he prayed a prayer of vocation. When you're brought to Christ's life, with your eyes wide open, feeling the needs of the world around you, the inescapable next step is to hear and answer the call of the new day, or the new week, or the new lifetime. That's what we're told Jesus did that day at the Jordan. When he was praying after he came up out of the muddy water, he got a clear sense of his call to ministry, and eventually the call to crucifixion and resurrection. Jesus stepped into his vocation that day, and every day thereafter. That's the lesson and example of his life, that's why we follow him and call him our Lord. Vocation is all about answering the Spirit's call. Of course, they're the big answers. Whom do we marry? Where do we live? What do we do for a living or a profession? But for most of us, most of the time, the questions of vocation are the daily ones. What am I called to do today? How can I serve? How can I be of use? What do I want to do? What must I do? There are many ways we try to dodge the question. And sometimes, often, the answer is difficult. But what we are being offered is the way of life. Freed from the darkness of despair, empowered and enlightened by compassion, we must step forward into the daily wealth of the days and hours that God has given us. Now, I'm almost sure that that's what Jesus was praying about at the Jordan that day. He was finding the confidence that this was the time to begin again. He was seeking to understand what he was to do next. That's not just my opinion. That's what the Gospels say happened. After he left the group of people at the Jordan River, Jesus went back out into the wilderness by himself and he prayed for 40 days about his vocation. And then he came back, as we know, into civilization, into Galilee, and started preaching and healing people. The baptism in Jordan's muddy waters was a symbol of the spiritual life in which Jesus walked daily, and into which he, by the Spirit of God, invites us. The muddy water is a place of birth. It's a life of prayer. And ultimately, it's life fully alive that we are part. 
Now, I believe that most of us are praying most of the time without even knowing. That's what I believe. Uh, we'll talk about Romans uh, 8 at some point if you want to talk about what he says there. We're praying most of the time without even knowing it. But sometimes we're aware of it. And inevitably, the prayers will follow on one another, giving shape to our daily journey. First, the prayer of rebirth. Second, the prayers of compassion. And third, the prayer of vocation. Out of the muddy waters, every new day.